Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hess. I'm here with the administrator of the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District. I want to say hi to Julie Pride. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, except the fact that we are almost at 200,000 deaths as a result of COVID. In the county, I know we're doing better than the rest of the country. Where are we with our current numbers? Uh, currently, let's see, we have 347 active cases, a total of 4,299. We have four people hospitalized right now. And we've done, um, we're edging close to 450,000 tests in this county alone. That's amazing. We are two weeks out from Labor Day now. Mm -hmm. So did we see an uptick in cases? We did. We saw it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. Um, you, sometimes the numbers, when you look at them on our screen, are a little bit, you know, we had a lot of cases from the U of I, and then those went out of being active cases. So, but we are seeing more community um, spread, and probably some of that was from gatherings related to Labor Day. So we're all waiting for the vaccine, and there are three pharmaceutical companies working on a vaccine right now, and a couple of them have, are in advanced trials. When will you personally feel comfortable taking a vaccine? Well, first of all, I've signed up to be in a vaccine trial, so um, that means that if I am selected, um, I will be randomly assigned to one of the groups to either get the experiment or to get the vaccine or to get a placebo. But I would feel safe as long as it's gone through um, the phase three clinical trials. And I want to hear directly from the scientists, not from the salespeople or politicians. I want to hear, just like we would with anything, um, that, these, that the vaccines are, are ready to go. The flu vaccine is ready to go. Perfect transition. We can go ahead and get it. Why is it important to get it early this year? Well, it's not necessarily important to get it early, but it is important to get it. Um, people need to not wait until flu gets in our community because that's never a good idea because it takes at least two weeks to, uh, or it takes about two weeks to get immunity, full immunity from the vaccine. So, you know, whenever you get a chance, get it. And, um, you know, we're really hoping that the combination of high levels of vaccine um, as well as all the masking, social distancing that we're doing for COVID really keeps our flu numbers down because all of that will help. And the idea again is not to have a bunch of people being sick with flu and COVID at the same time um, taking up the hospital resources and healthcare resources. So I just got a survey from the Champaign schools because we are coming up on flu season and we're coming up to the possible end of remote learning, it had one question on the survey, which is, do you want to return to in-person education this fall? How would you personally answer that if you had school-aged children? Uh, well, you know, personally with my situation, um, I would probably have, I don't know, it's a really tough one. I would be more comfortable with them not being in, in school. However, um, the schools do seem to be doing a pretty darn good job with what they need to do as far as dis distancing and masking. Um, so I, I would probably, you know, it's really hard for me to say, but I, the one thing that I would like to see, which we are seeing from the schools, and that is an option, because there are going to be people that are children or people in the households where it is a very big risk to um, possibly get the child infected for them to bring it back home. So, um, I do like that they're asking and I do like that most places offer options so that you have, you know, in-person learning if that's what your child needs and you have the ability to keep your child and or uh, the people in your household safe by doing um, remote learning. And Champaign and Urbana are the only two schools in this area that aren't in-person schooling right now. Have we seen an uptick in St. Joe, Muhammad, Rantoul, Tolono? Well, I can say we've seen cases we're always going to see cases because it's impossible to keep the cases out of the school. Um, with that said, or any, any setting, with that said though, they are doing a really pretty good, darn good job of doing what they need to do to prevent an outbreak once it gets inside of the school. So this is not something that we can um, ease up on. This is going to be going through the winter and we're gonna to have to be very careful 
to maintain that distancing and keep doing all the things that we do. And there does, you know, with anything, you get kind of fatigued with it or you get um, a little more lax with it. And it's just something that we can't. So we all, we all need to help each other by reminding each other, whether you're kids or adults or whatever, to, you know, maintain that space and keep the masks on. We continue to see Blacks and Hispanics getting COVID and getting sick at disproportionate rates. How do we keep certain populations from continuing to skyrocket in these rates? What can we do as a community to help? Well, I mean, a lot of it has to do with um, what type of jobs someone is working in and if they have, um, you know, more access to the public. But I think what's concerning is that what we're seeing is a higher level of um, hospitalizations and um, deaths in really serious cases associated with people of color throughout our country. And um, that is something that is a an issue that we all saw coming based on the fact that um, a lot of times they have less access to health care than uh, other communities. And when you have less access to health care, you're going to have underlying health conditions that put you more at risk, whether you know it or not. Um, so if you have something, if you have a, a, a heart disease or high blood pressure or something that's, you know, the silent killers, the diabetes, and you don't know it, that makes you no less at risk. Um, you just aren't aware of it. So you may not realize that you're in a high risk category. Obesity is also um, a very um, important um, contributing factor to negative outcomes with COVID in a lot of, lots of situations. We're not hearing about Arizona, Texas, and Florida anymore. Now I'm starting to read more about how Europe is really having another wave England is considering a two-week shutdown as Spain did earlier this year. Is that something that you could see happening here in the U.S. happening again? It, it could certainly happen. It depends on, you know, what's going on in the winter, winter months. And, um, you know, with, with us being able to just travel from state to state and jurisdiction to jurisdiction, um, unless everybody is on the same page at the same time, it doesn't do a lot of good to have, have the um, lockdowns. Um, when you're talking about the entire country. Um, certainly it helps, you know, in, to, to close a school or to close a business or something if it's having, you know, a big outbreak. But when you're talking about something like they're talking about doing um, over in Europe, that's, everybody needs to be on the same page with that and they need to be um, taking it very seriously and uh, staying home. And they were doing a good job, but unfortunately they had some of the stuff that we've got going on over here now, this um, sort of magical thinking that, that it's not necessary any, anymore. Um, we can look all around the country and see all the problems that have happened with the, um, anytime you have any, any mass gatherings and they're just, you know, then you see those states going into the red zone and, and you know, need, needless hospitalizations, needless illness and needless death. Everyone is on the same page now in the Big Ten that they're, see how I did that transition, how they're playing football. The first weekend is October 23rd. What are your thoughts about playing football during a pandemic, a contact sport? Well, you know, in general, I'm not a big fan of the idea of it. However, um, <clears throat> you know, you, the only one I'm really paying a lot of attention to is the U of I, and they we're just in a unique situation here because with all of the testing and the and all of the measures that they have in place, um, they can really do do a good job with what they need to do, which is um, preventing people who are ill from playing or being around other people. Um, so, assuming that the other places adapt that you know same very strenuous model, you know it could work. Um, always, it's a concern about what are some of the, you know, anybody who gets infected can have problems, including, you know, up to death. And um, they found, you know, cardiac issues, circulatory issues, lung damage, all kinds of stuff. So um, it, again, it's not something to take seriously um, with the, the colleges being back in. Um, again, if they can't do the stuff that the U of I is doing, I would be, I would be concerned. If they do that, you know, I think that it, it could be done um, a lot safer, so. 
people like to congregate for tailgates. I mean, football season, fall. Would you like to see fines handed out if people violate the group rules? Would you, would you like to see police resources used to hand out fines? Well, actually, public health, um, you know, and, and locally, we have the ordinance that public health or, or police or whoever can, can issue fines if, if people do things like that. So, you know, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to, to waste time. We don't want to, to have to be, you know, chasing around babysitting everyone. We just want people to, to take this seriously and continue doing what they need to do. And again, I cannot stress how proud I am of this community and how much, um, how much better we're doing than a lot of places. And again, I, I, look at the leadership of the local government and the, the, uh, the uh, modeling of behavior and uh, just all of the resources that are being put into this in our community. So, um, but, you know, it's, it's something that um, there are going to be issues in, in the winter that are going to be different because um, we're going to have to go inside. And so we've got to figure out how to do that in a way we've got to figure out how to do it less. We've got to figure out how to do it with fewer people. We've got to figure out how to do it in a way that we keep our masks on the entire time. So it's, it's going to be a, a, a potentially uh, difficult winter. So, I mean, I, I, I hope that people are starting to think about that and think about how to do things differently. Everything, you know, from the holidays, you, you have to start thinking of this now because um, it is going to be, it is going to be challenging. We have not overwhelmed our hospital systems and that has been one of your goals all along, that and to prevent outbreaks in nursing and you know, long-term mm -hmm. care facilities. At what point, if we have flu-like symptoms, do we call our doctor? We wanna try not to go to the hospital, but should we go to the hospital? Tell us what we should look for in terms of hospital visits. Well, luckily in this community, if you, um, feel like you need, you know, you feel like you have flu-like symptoms or whatever, you can call into your, um, we can call into telemedicine. We have, you know, patient advisory nurses to talk to. So you can do a lot of stuff over the phone. They're probably, at some point in the winter, they're going to want to be able to immediately determine between flu and COVID because um, flu, there is, you know, a treatment for that. We want people to get the vaccines first and then if necessary, if they're at risk, treatment. But in, in general, you know, anytime you feel like you need to go to um, see a healthcare provider, you need to go see a healthcare provider. And luckily, like I said, in this community, we can call in um, and, and check ahead of time, check directly with your healthcare provider, um, whether that's, you know, Francis Nelson or, or Carl or Christy or wherever. In every election year, we say this is the most important election of our lifetime. But in this election, healthcare is on the ballot. This is the most important of my lifetime. Okay, I was, that was my question is, is this the most important election that every single person needs to vote? Because I don't know anyone who doesn't have a pre-existing condition. That, that is correct. Um, the healthcare issue alone should be one that really, really concerns people. Um, I, there are things that have happened with the Affordable Care Act that have made even dealing with this pandemic you know, locally better. Um, the expansion of, of Medicaid, so that people were having health care um, that we did in Illinois. Um, the um, electronic health records, a, a big push of that, and um, the systems like INEDS, those were all a part of, of Affordable Care Act. All, there's all kinds of things that people don't realize that are very important. And um, we just, you know, we can't go back. And Affordable Care Act certainly isn't perfect. It can be improved upon. Um, greatly, uh, but we have to have access to health care. It has to be seen as a right um, because it is not, there's, people don't live in little bubbles. We are all connected. We are connected to the environment. We are connected to animals. We are connected to all other people all over the world. Um, so uh, I just hope that people really pay attention to the health care issue um, that we're talking about this year because if we lose Affordable Care Act, um, I, I will be very, very, very concerned. And it scares me a bit that this close to an election with all of the political drama happening, 
you hear the headlines of less about COVID. We need to stay vigilant. This is not the time to forget that we have a pandemic on our hands, correct? That's correct. And, you know, despite talks of immediate vaccination, that is not going to be something that is going to really uh, slow the spread of this for quite some time. So it's, we really have to, we really have to get a mindset that this is going to go on for quite a while. It's definitely going to go on, you know, in through spring. And we have to think about how we're going to do things differently throughout the winter, throughout the cold weather, really, because we had a little of that at the beginning, but we also had more of a lockdown situation. So now people are going to be on their own to, to get this figured out. So hopefully um, they start thinking about it now and not waiting until the last minute. Everyone needs to do what they can to stay healthy and to take care of each other. I want to thank Jason Liggett, our wonderful producer at UPTV. Also, Urbana Mayor Diane Marlin, thank you for continuing to be our partner in this. Julie Pride, please pass our thank yous along to your staff, but especially to you, the administrator of the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District. Thank you so much.